as a public service to the many communities served by its 96 banking offices throughout Northern California, American Trust Company takes pleasure in bringing you another program in the Academy Award-winning television series, Science in Action. Science in Action is produced by the West's oldest scientific institution, the California Academy of Sciences. It is brought to you by American Trust Company with more than 102 years of banking service. American Trust Company, banking since 1854, now invites you to join your host for the evening, Dr. Earl S. Harold. Be with us in just a moment. Right now with J. Jacobus is um, American Trust Company's young student guest, and his name is Wei E. Lee. Let's meet him. Welcome to Science in Action, Way. How old are you? I'm 16 now. What grade are you in high school? Well, I'm a senior now. Where's that? Berkeley High School, sir. Well, Berkeley High has sent along some mighty fine science students to us here in Science in Action. Uh, you were telling me earlier that you participate in a lot of outdoor activities. That is, outside of school, you do quite a bit of work. What kind of work do you do? Well, right now I'm working as a lab assistant in the anatomy department at the University of California. But usually after school, I work as a lab assistant for the Science department, for example. You're quite busy for a young high school student. Your father is up at the university, too, isn't he? Do you work for him? No, I don't. What, is, what department is he with? Oh, well, he's with the biochemistry department. He's a professor up there, isn't he? Yes. Well, now, you have a very intricate experiment to show us this evening. I won't even try to uh, describe it. Will you tell us what it is? Well, to the medical student, this is known as a chymograph. And it's a device to record the actions of a piece of rat tissue. Well, like that rat over there, I suppose. Yes. Well, now, let's move one of our television cameras in here rather close so our viewers at home can see the apparatus you've set up. And you can describe to us first, where is the tissue in this setup? Well, the tissue is in this little glass tube here. And we try to stimulate the same condition that the tissue has when it's inside the rat. Now, around the tissue is a, is a very small amount of salt water. And this water solution supplies all the food necessary for the tissue. That's what's in the little vial that the tissue is resting in? Yes. Now what's in this big uh, container? Well, this is a water, water bath to keep the body temperature of the rat. So, so this tissue is living now as it was in the rat. I see. Now, what does the uh, rest of the device do? Well, the one, one part of the tissue is anchored, and the other end fits onto a lever, you see. And then when the tissue contracts, the lever goes up. And you can see that it's described a pattern over a period of about two and a half hours. On that smoked drum over there. Well, now, what do you add to the tissue to make it uh, react like that? Well, you add a hormone called Pitocin. And when you add a very small, minute amount of Pitocin to this tissue, it causes the tissue to contract, as you can see by the peak up here. Oh, well, that's certainly a very interesting thing. Do you plan to go yes. on and study science when you leave Berkeley High? Yes. And where will you do your studying? University of California. I kind of expected that. We have a passbook for you, Way, which was sent over from the North Berkeley office of American Trust Company. Mr. Henry Albrecht took care of that. Thank you for being our guest on Science in Action, and good luck to you when you go to the University of California, not as a worker, but as a student. <laughs> it certainly is nice to get a head start on saving while you're young. You know, 50 years ago, children had some wonderful devices to help them get started saving. The devices were the famous mechanical banks. These uh, very fascinating little gadgets came in all sorts of designs, but they all had one common purpose, and that was to make savings as easy as possible. Look at this one, for example. We've placed a dime up here in the monkey's mouth, and when we operate the lever, he'll jump up here on the music box, and the coin will be deposited. Watch. Isn't that an easy way to save? Well, you notice that the coin is deposited automatically. Well, of course, these mechanical banks, unfortunately, are no longer made. But fortunately enough, the system of saving automatically is still available to us today. Of course, I'm thinking about American Trust Company's automatic saving service. Now, automatic saving is much easier than working with the mechanical banks because you don't have to do any work at all. The bank does all the work for you. Here's how automatic savings operates. Each month, American Trust Company takes an amount of money that you specify from your checking account and then deposits that amount automatically into your savings account. You don't even have to visit the bank. And you don't have to make out deposit slips either. But what's most important, you don't have to worry any longer about forgetting to save. For the bank remembers to make those deposits for you regularly and automatically. You simply tell American Trust Company once how much money you want to save each month. That's what I call an easy way to watch your funds accumulate. 
Automatic saving is a special service available to every American Trust Company depositor, and any office of American Trust Company can help you get started. So why not come in soon? And now let's rejoin Dr. Earl S. Harold and his Animal of the Week. Our Animal of the Week, or I should say Animals of the Week, fit into the group uh, known as the Crocodilians. This is a very nice little baby crocodile that came in to us recently from the Pelau Islands. Mr. Sidney Sade brought him in. You notice how he opens his mouth, those very sharp teeth there. The thing I'd like to have you see more than anything else is the fact that the crocodile has an extremely pointed snout. Now, notice when I bring him down in position here, that snout is very pointed. I'm going to bring out a little baby alligator so that you can see the comparison between the crocodile and the alligator. Now, here's a baby alligator. Notice a very broad snout. You can see the comparison between the two, and I'm going to add one more because this is the kind of an animal that's being sold in the pet shops today as a crocodile. And here, I mean, as an alligator. This little fellow here that I'm holding in this hand and I'm moving at the present moment, Notice he has a, a little uh, more pointed snout than, uh, than the uh, alligator, and it isn't quite as pointed as that of the crocodile. But this comes from South America, and it's known as a caiman, sometimes called caiman. And the color pattern is different. It has a black color pattern uh, over the white, whereas our little alligator here is white on black. And of course, you wouldn't mistake any of these for the crocodile with his very pointed snout. Now, the little alligator, the fellow in the middle, makes a good pet. And he's rather docile when he grows up. And if you keep them at 80 degrees, they will grow about a foot a year. But that isn't true of the other, which I, the others which I hold, the caiman and the crocodile. They have a rather nasty temperament. When they're a little bit larger than this, then you have to watch out because they begin to show that temperament. Recently, we had uh, some adult caiman at Steinhardt Aquarium, and we had to trade them for some more docile alligators to replace them because uh, they can't very well be trusted. So there are the three, the crocodile with the pointed snout, the alligator with the blunt snout, and the caiman, that's often sold as an alligator, with the semi-pointed snout. Crocodiles live in salt water, the other two in fresh water. So I'll put them back in the tank now, and we'll take them back to Steinhardt Aquarium once again and put them in on display. Just a moment, I'd like to tell you something about our next week's program. Now, Hughes Aircraft has uh, prepared some outstanding exhibits which they'll have here at the laboratory this next week. And those exhibits have to do with high-speed aircraft and some of the new electronic devices that are used to make the operation of the aircraft a bit simpler. Dr. Puckett will be our guest, and we're hoping that you'll plan to be with us then one week from this time. Thank you. You have just seen another in the fascinating television series, Science in Action. Science in Action is produced by the California Academy of Sciences under the supervision of its director, Dr. Robert C. Miller. These programs are brought to you every Monday at 7 p.m. by American Trust Company as a public service to the many communities served by its banking offices. Until next Monday at 7, good evening.